Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how the pros install a no dig Kentucky four board fence crazy fast, like a thousand feet in a day fast. That is crazy. Luckily for them, we're just putting in about 260 feet today. He's back. Hi guys. Mark from SWI is here. I brought a friend. And this is Ryan Sloop, yeah. North Carolina. North Carolina? Let the sarcasm begin? No, we got in trouble for that last time. Oh, no, well, that's what makes it fun, though. Keep it, keep it very professional. Was he making fun of me over there? Or was, was he self, was he self-deprecating? Did you just deprecate in my yard, dude? No funny business. We're just gonna get it done. Witching. Does it work? Yes, it does work. Yeah. All you need is a piece of conductive wire. So you hold it in your hand real loose. Mm -hmm. Just barely, no friction on it. Just enough friction to hold it. And then just a little bit of a droop, not a whole lot. At least this is what's worked for me. So as you walk along, just go slow. As you walk along and you hit something, all right, that's crazy. It'll turn sideways. That's crazy. Yeah. So it'll do. Do that again. It'll do water, power, vacant. I mean, it'll do anything. Anything yeah. that the ground is disturbed on. So as you walk along, that's crazy. It turns sideways. I've always used two though. Uh -uh. Two's conflicting. Oh. No, they go this way. One will go that way. I know, but if way. you get in, if you got the wrong witch, if you're taught by the wrong witch, then they'll. they'll How bang do you know off which is witch though? So the witch taught me was <laughs> only had one arm. Fascinating the way you're rolling that string up. Did you used to do like any of that? Fancy, what's that? Aerobic oh, interpretive, dance. Dance. Yeah. interpretive dance. Interpretive yeah. dance. Yeah. That's when the way you were flicking that string. I was like, wow. Interpretive string dancing. Before you do any digging, or this is a no dig project, but ironically, I'm holding a shovel. Make sure you call 811. Find out where your utilities are. I called them out here, and it appears I have dug. I have just did a little research on my own out here, and like here's where our sewage is supposed to go right here and this is where they marked it but i found it to come all the way out here so they're about six feet off at least at this point they're six feet off and we you want to call 811 so that you can get the 411 so you don't have to call 911. that's right? a, that's right dude dude i know Did you pull I, that off your head i'm gonna trademark that mess oh man i don't know how it is out here but i think it's pretty standard industry wide that you have to be 24 inches off each side of the line if there's a line, I have to stay 24 inches over here and 24 inches over here. Anything in that four foot zone needs to be hand dug or hand excavated, I see. preferably even hydro -backed. Because what the guy told me that came out, and I, I don't want to name the company he was with, but we had three different companies come out and mark. And the one guy said, as long as we were one foot away from where they marked, if we hit something, they're liable for it. Mm, I don't know, in Wyoming, they're tall as two feet. Well, two feet. We're, we're in Georgia, dude. These are tapered posts. These are not perfect posts. Mm -hmm. I like to use a tapered natural post because this is how that tree grew. All we did at the mill, strip the bark off of it and then shove it through a treatment plant and get the treatment into it. Mm -hmm. So these are not run through a dowling machine or any kind of tapering machine, anything. So uh, the benefits to that, there's a lot of benefits to it. Benefits to that is this product will not warp. Trees don't warp once they're grown. So anytime we cut the surface off, then we're exposing the grains and we're losing a lot of integral integrity of the of the post so when you lay out a post we're looking for a straight edge and there will be a straight edge on most posts you have to have a pretty wonky post to not find a straight edge that was pretty wonky we're looking for a post that has good tight grains we're looking for a post that has an even turn anytime you cut a grain out you're pretty much losing the strength of that of that ring so if you look at the end of a two before they could make a, or a four before, they could make a four before out of this, but you're still paying for this whole product. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then when they cut those grains, the innermost complete circle is as strong a product as you have. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like a non-perfect post. That would also be really handy for all your uh, cows. Yeah, exactly. We were on our way to Indiana, there's an Amazon truck off in the weeds, like way off the ditch. Oh, wait, hey. Hey. Look, that, guy. that guy even has a CD on right? That guy 
I got a CDO. The great thing about this cable is I can use this cable to split my distance, right? Mm -hmm. So this tells me all along the fence line exactly where that post is going to line up. What's this monster called? Protec Evo. And I couldn't help but notice a uh, UK flag on there. Is this, is this made in jolly old England? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, they're made in. Uh, they are made in England. They're. Um, this is the Rolls Royce of post drivers. Yeah. So if you want a post driver that is that is made for it's made for what we do everyday production use. Mm -hmm. uh, you know your couch fencers aren't going to need this, but uh, it's uh, they're all custom built. They're built to how we want them built as contractors, mm -hmm. and each individual contractor will build them differently. Hmm. Uh, we actually sell these. Yeah, he sells these. So if somebody can go to swifence.com. Yeah, we sell these. Yep. And they're, the biggest claim to fame on these machines is that they're set up for one-man post-driving operation. With a, typical post, with a typical post driver, you have to have somebody in the machine and somebody outside the machine. With this one, it can all be done by the operator. The operator can control everything from outside. And it turns, I mean, so you're saving that entire person. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is what we use for stretching wire, like barbed wire, smooth wire. Rather than using a come along or the world famous goldenrod, use these boundary strainers, chain walkers. What else you call them? Whiz poppers. I don't know about that. Now can yeah. somebody buy these from you? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I had a feeling they might could find this on swifence.com. We're all about having the right tools for the job. I got my eyes. Let's see, four more, 55 inches. When you're driving post, fence posts are kind of like family. Each individual one might not be perfect, but if you put them all together, we can all live with that. So we'll, we'll drive all the posts and then we'll come back and kind of, you know, whip some kids and get them back in line. Mark, I got you some uh, hearing uh, yeah. hearing protection. That's yeah. uh, kind of. I'm good. That's all I have. I'll just stay down here away from all the noise. <laughs> if I don't point it out, somebody in the comments is going to point you it out. You led me on. You said it was no dig, and this I saw that guy with the shovel. I know. Total fabrication. Yeah. Clickbait. Clickbait. That sounded not good. Break our shovel. <laughs> I was exercising it. <laughs> sometimes when you push things to their limits, they grow stronger and sometimes yeah. they crack and break. What that is? Is that a poop pipe? That's not a poop pipe. Is that a wrapped? Oh, that looks like a, yes, that is a locate marker. Yes, that's exactly what's down there. Yep. It says low. Oh, below. 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 It says ELO. Probably says number two below. <laughs> Do not poke this, you will regret it. I lied. Gas line's green. Is gas line green? No. <laughs> hey, Ryan, methane. Methane gas. It's a turd pipe. <laughs> it's full of farts. <laughs> Uh-huh. I 
truck and send it. I'll do a little send. Still got it. And I didn't die. Unload from here. Why are you walking backwards? Because she's bullying me. <laughs> Careful. One arm and that one's falling. So this is gonna mark the top of our boards. This will just we'll be able to set our flow. Because we're not 100% on all these so we'll set our flow and then we'll mark the top board so we'll just mark all our boards down from the string once we set the flow so, so you we'll don't necessarily worry about this being level you worry about it looking good looking good yep. that's, yep. Yep. that's what yep. when you're talking about flow you're talking about with the land yep. right now yeah I'll get it later The dip here and the dip down there is not good. So what we want to do is we want to make it roll and that is not at all re uh, representative of the train. Okay, we got a hack here. Yeah, what is this? Yep, run one each way. So to find the exact middle, run yours that way. So to find the exact middle, you find out where both the numbers line up. You can't think of the math, right? 51 and a half. Let's just say it's 36 and three quarters. Or yeah, something. math is hard. Math is hard, right? So then you turn it to an easily divisible number. So let's go to 60. Half of 60 is 30. Right there. If you split that in half, this was a sheet of plywood. That would be exactly half right. of that length. L-I-B. L-I-B. These are pearls. You ever heard that trick? Nope. I just always use math. <laughs> I'm a little this, slow. This is what happens when you run into people that are bad at math. Watch our, your our, mouth when you speak to me. <laughs> what, what do we got going on here now? It's called a male. Every fence man needs one of these, right? A male? It's, yeah, it's a male. M -E -L -L, right? It's a European hammer. It's got a big flat face on it. Uh huh. We'll use this to set our grade on final grade. So right there is where one of those goes. What doth we do about that? Let's ask the comment section. What should we do? Let me know in the comments. The Mark and Ryan have marked the sweep or the flow as they call it along the land with the string here. And now what are you doing, Mark? And then so you'll, you'll take the string down then? Or? The string represents the top top board and then we're just going one foot one apart. We're just putting a mark. And I like to use a tape measure, so I use a pole. Can I go all the way up? Yeah, go as high as you want. Pull it, hold it. Just to do. 
Y'all better redneck or eyes. Yeah, and uh, you see what they're doing there. Using a pot as a stop block. Y'all come to Georgia and y'all really Georgia it up. Every now and then we'll give it a whirl for checking. Did you draw my sidewalk? Is that gonna be a problem? <laughs> I'll let it slide. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> you can help me down there. God, this is like this is painful. painful. Please understand that I'm trying to replicate what you may have at your own house with bare minimal tools, and so. Uh, because what you're going to be asking yourself is why is that poor fat old man doing all this work on the ground like that rather than on a bench but I want to show you the wrong way to do it so you have a better idea of probably the proper way um, so now that you know the wrong way we'll finish this job out the wrong way and the next time we come over here to Adam's house and do another fence we'll do it the right way So this is the nail gun that we're gonna to use to put these boards up. And I gotta say that this looks like one of those nail guns that somebody would be holding their nail gun. And then you would pick this up and you'd be like, it's not a nail gun, mate. This is a nail gun. This thing is huge. Yeah, this is definitely the one Crocodile de Dundee. <laughs> crocodile. De Dun. Crocodile de Dundee. De Dundee, yes, Crocodile Dundee. See these people, some of these people aren't even gonna know what that is. Yeah, they don't even get That's that reference. Shame. Yeah. yeah, these are the nails. And for reference, a 20 penny nail is probably gonna be somewhere right about there. And that's what most people are gonna use. So something about like that is what typically gets used. But this is what we're gonna use. So That's freaking huge, dude. These are some good sized nails. Yeah, when people are like, I can't believe you used a nail on that fence instead of a screw. These are oh. ring shank nails, and then this is an adhesive, so when they get shot in, they heat up a little bit, and good luck trying to pull one of these out. Yeah, I can imagine. You just cut them off. Yeah. So this is what we're gonna use to attach your boards. Should last a lifetime. Serious stuff. Let's do it! Just don't live too long and make me a liar. Yeah, you got it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mark, so we've got quite a bit of this done. Y'all truck along on this thing super fast. What is the process here? Why, why are we doing it this way? So it's always stronger if you don't put all your seams on one post. So obviously we're gonna stagger all the boards. And basically a three-man crew works really well for this. Uh, you, me, and Ryan over here. Just kinda... so we'll put up four boards, then we'll cut, and that gives the nailer time to nail all the face, face boards on, speeding up the process. Um, and if you have all your boards laid out correctly, there should be two boards seamed up on each post. So these two go to this post, those two go to that post and stuff. So you've got them staggered out like that and you know you've got enough. This is kind of personal preference. Some people 
Uh, some people don't cut them at all. Some people leave them flat. Some people cut them at a slight angle. I cut at a slight angle because I feel like a lot of people want to see it shed water. It's kind mm -hmm. of an old school thinking there. Uh, the damage to this fence will actually be done by a weed eater. Yeah. More than anything else, a weed eater will do more damage. So uh, I recommend spraying around your post instead of weed eating because you're taking out those, you're taking that treatment out every time you weed eat. So mm -hmm. see. You every professional on the planet, <clears throat> couch professional on the planet will comment on all the ways that we screwed this up. I right. guarantee it. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I seen a friend of mine, he called me out there one time and he was putting a fence in and I seen him do it and he ain't doing nothing like that right there. And that, friends, is how you do a no-dig Kentucky four-board fence like the pros. You should go check out Mark's channel, SWI Fence on YouTube or SWIFence.com, successful contractor. It's just a little thing I do. Yeah. Or if you're in North Carolina, you should check out Sloop Fencing for all your professional fencing needs because obviously, look, these guys do awesome work.